Hello and welcome back to the season finale of the Flurry Sports Podcast. Super Bowl is in the books. NFL year comes to a close. And now, Flurry Sports season seven? Yep. Six or seven. Seven? Seven comes to a close. What a season it's been. And this is wow. the point where prepared hosts would have taken a trip down memory lane and been like, remember when this happened earlier? That was this season? Oh, my God, that's crazy. And, I, I mean, a lot has happened, I'm sure. Um, maybe I'll really quick find what the first podcast title episode was to this season, and we can just guess what Ooh. that episode was about just based on the title. Um, and speaking of titles, last week's title was a doozy, not really in favor of Jake, and I do apologize for that. Uh, but it was timely. It was a timely attack on one of our nation's greatest heroes. And uh, pour one out of your red solo cup for Toby Keith. Jake, any any words about Mr. Keith? The timing could have been better for him. I feel like I've never said anything bad about him ever. And then he croaked. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was tough. Uh, all I'll say to Toby is uh, I don't think we would have gotten along but I liked his music, okay? Did you? Because last week, you, like, scoffed yeah. at me when I said Toby Keith would be the greatest Super Bowl. I I listened to so much Toby Keith this week. And, boy. I Banger, did scoff at you. I, did, I like him, but I don't know why he's different than Jimmy Buffett. Also dead. I shouldn't pick on Jimmy Buffett. I gotta I mean, stop. Can you imagine a halftime show of T- Toby Keith and Jimmy Buffett, though? The vibe. I love a combo vibe. act. I'm just saying he's a little. What? He's, he's a, a little, little cheesy. Nothing. Cheesy. What? And and Usher's not. Oh, hey, I was advocate. That was why that came up last week. Was because I was like, can we do a little better? By the way. I liked it more than I thought it would. Same. I think this is, I said right after it, I think it's by far the best Super Bowl halftime show we've seen in a long time. Put on a opinion. show, he like went and did stuff. And it was like, I mean, it was like good music. I don't know. Yeah. Like, one of those things he did, Alicia Keys. Uh, Alicia Keys is great. Yeah. That was the crazy. Au- Dude, they the were a audio, little. The audio in the beginning was so bad. They so fucked bad. over Usher. I know. That was bad. Alicia Keys, Mr. Faust, now, which has to be the first time that's ever happened ever. Ever. Yeah. What a time um, to do it. But it sounded really good. Um, There's a guy oh, that I thought was CeeLo Green that came out and had a speaking <laughs> part. I still don't know who that True. was. Ludacris and Little John look exactly like they did the last time I saw them. And I mean, I assume Her. you're going. Yeah, you are going. We will be seeing Ludacris again. Uh, yeah. later this year that was just his warm-up uh, yeah. we we were wondering if he was ever going to come out because i'm like is he going to turn down the super bowl and then go to chippewa falls wisconsin because that's pretty iconic uh but no he yeah, it's ludicrous by the way perfect to your point him and little john like i feel like they will be the exact same for at least another 25 years little john is one of those artists where it's like i got hype when he was there yes He's yeah, he's always there for I mean vibes again, like good vibes. There's never been a little John song where it's like, oh, why Lil John show up and say what? You know? No. It's always like and in a performance like that, it's like everyone's singing, right? So everyone's doing their best. He's like screaming at me. <laughs> like, I was like, it's so good. Like you can't, you know, you can't change perfection. And Usher and him, Usher and his dancers were dancing. Little John was on stage and he didn't know what to do. You could tell like there was no choreography for him. It's totally like, hey, you stand off to the side while the camera's on Usher. But then they flashed a little John. It was totally like, I don't know what to do with my arms at this current moment. And then Ludacris came out. So if you want to watch back for that, good moment there. But I mean, one other rapper related ones over the past several years, though, right? Oh, oh, yes. Sorry. Focusing on that question. Yeah, I think, thinking back, this is my favorite since Lady Gaga. They, they, was that before the weekend or after? Before the weekend. That was the last before COVID. It's been weekend. Um, and then 
because the Super Bowl 2020 happened pre-COVID, which is weird to think of. So um, my memory is that it goes Lady Gaga weekend and then last year's, which was Rihanna. Rihanna. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, and actually Lady Gaga is even one year further forward than that because uh, in between the weekend and Rihanna is, of course, the hip hop show. Oh, yeah. That so one, uh, best since that, that. Would have been so much better. Yeah, but, but it it's a little. It had to do a lot. Like I was hoping since then, and this one was a little like that. Like okay, cool, we're doing another hip hop act. That one was like, sorry about all the hip hop acts we missed. I guess we got to get them all in now. Like we got Mary J. Blige in that. I still think yeah. about that. Of like, should have been her own. Missy Elliott was there. Well, the whole thing was like. They announced five people, I think. Four or five people are doing the halftime show. And everyone's like, that's too many. They're not going to have enough like mic time to like make it worth it. And then the first thing we see is 50 set hanging upside down. And we're like, why is 50 here? And then it just kept going on and on and well, on. Especially, like I think you could have done with a bunch of them. But I feel like I got <laughs> enough Snoop, enough Dre. Yeah. And of course... Not even close to enough Eminem or enough Kendrick. Right. Yeah. Kendrick, I think people would forget was even there. I liked having him so that they could say, but I he was one where I'm like, save him for his own freaking show. For sure. For sure. And I know yeah. everyone's like, well, you pay to do the Super Bowl. So Kendrick maybe is too big for the Super Bowl. But I don't know. He's got a different audience. So it's like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, he if he did it, it would be great. I don't know what he gains from it. Whereas Usher is like, oh, Usher is still doing his thing. People didn't know. So True. this was, I, this is one of the few people who have done it where I fully understand why he did it. And I think it's actually going to benefit him. But like Rihanna did it to adult. She's pregnant and sell makeup. And I don't think it really helped her. Maybe I think it I mean, helped no, her some makeup. I think it helped her some makeup. I mean, for how, like, maybe very short term. There's no... It's I mean, like, yeah, but she made a lot of money real quick. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think there's people who just did... Diapers, like, oh, dude. makeup? Diapers are a lot of money. Whatever guess, you can I, get. I guess. I don't know. I don't get the point of that. I All don't right, get the I'm point the of list. Adam Levine. I don't get the point of... Oh. Coldplay did it at one point. They died, I think, after that. Like Coldplay did it. People forget about that. Coldplay did it. Two years before that, <laughs> Bruno Mars did it before mm. uh, 24 Karat Magic and Uptown Funk came out. And then the year be- after really? that, yeah, 100%. And then the year after that, Beyonce performed before mm. Lemonade. So <laughs> then yeah. I always remember that with the Coldplay one because I don't mind the Coldplay one because it is one third, maybe, Coldplay. And then Bruno and Beyonce come back because the Super was like, we really missed yeah. <laughs> like our chance to have Prime. Oh, I right. still think okay. about that of like a full uh, partition Beyonce show would have been killer. Like we got Beyonce when her closer was Halo. That's true. I'm not a Beyonce oh. gal, you know. Well, I'm not. I'm not really into her music. I think she's. I, I respect her. Well, I think she's talented crap, at dude. other stuff, but not, I'm not into her music. <laughs> she's talented other stuff. She's got a booty. Um, yeah, yeah, dude. She's one of the more talented members of Destiny's Child. Not the most, but she's up there. We know Kelly Rowland. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I agree. I think I saw the future coming at me like a freight train. Do you know what next 2000s rappers for sure going to do it? Who's that? I think in like a couple years, we're set to have a Super Bowl in Canada. We are getting a Drake halftime show or my so? arm falls off. He's every and like he wants people to remember him. He's kind of like a joke now. Um, he's so he's bigger than he's ever been, though. In some ways, I feel like he's going to do Super Bowl. I feel like he's lost his pop culture edge. If, if it goes to Canada, I don't think that I don't think that can happen. But if it somehow did, by the way, I, I made up a that. rumor. I don't know if it's going to be there. I feel like it should be though. 
I don't think there's any shot it can be out of country. There's just way too much logistics. Just for Drake. Well, it's also like this is the biggest event in America every year. So what (laughs) if we did it in Toronto? Yeah, what if we take away all of that money? (laughs) Come on. Give him a little. We're trying to expand, dude. You saw that commercial. Um, Little very tiny side tangent. I thought we got the World Cup coming. And did you know, like, it's America's World Cup? We're playing games, I think, in Canada and Mexico. It's the North America World Cup. Yeah. What the fuck? That that is why no that that is is that is it a part of NATO? Is it in the NATO treaty? Like it's so stupid that we have to part share with those losers. Yeah, uh, I think that's dumb. I think it's dumb. Do you know where the Midwest one is? No, Kansas City, big soccer town. Notably, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Not Chicago. That's true. If you're going Midwest, just go there or go to Indy, something like that. Go to Indy. Go to hell. The ball drops in New Orleans. We count yeah. that. Go there, the Midwest. That's true. Yeah, that would have been. That is super weird. I don't know. It's also, just I, random. I, also, listen. Messi's not playing for Team USA. <laughs> it's true. We also we've got a lot coming up for us. We got an Olympics coming down the pipe. Hmm. We got uh, UFC 300 coming. Oh my god! A okay, months. Couple quick hitters, and then I've realized we haven't actually talked about the Super Bowl yet. But um, <laughs> be a funny bit if we don't, though, huh? People keep listening. That's true. Yeah, you don't know what's going to happen. First off, Drake. Did you hear he made a bet on the Super Bowl? Yeah. Well, I got a notification. He made like a million, a couple million dollars on cheat the Chiefs or something. He bet a million dollars. 1.3 on the Chiefs winning. Okay. okay. I'm out on it. I'm out on it. Here's why. You can't be that rich and bet the favorite <laughs> for a million dollars. They weren't the favorite. They're the underdogs. In the I end. don't, you know, you can't make a hedge bet like that. That's a smart bet that you or I make. Drake can't come in there with his milk. Give it to me, goddammit. That's true. That's fair. But like his whole thing is the only thing he does right now is gamble. He hasn't made music in forever. He had, his whole thing is that he gambles and he has a brand around gambling now. In that way, he is like the Michael Jordan of gambling or of music. I, I, I guess, kind of. In that all he does is gamble. Um, Fair enough. Fair enough. It's my Same favorite part that. about Last Dance. I'm not trying to make fun of like gambling <laughs> addiction. It's just that there's an episode where it's like, how did Michael get competitive? And it's like, he bet on... <laughs> It's like he bet on golf games. He bet on free throws. It's like no one knew he had a problem. What a surprise. Like, it's like, what are we doing? It's like he's betting on batting practice. Like, it's like, this is wild. Everything. Like Phil Mickelson. And I've heard stories about him on the golf course. And, you know, there's people who just have put a little money on the line when they're rich or whatever. It's like just to feel something inside. He puts like a subs- a bad amount of money. That's the only way I can say it. Like it way too much money. Picture a number that you would put on whatever golf game, a game that you're pretty confident you would win, but you're probably going to lose because you're not as good as you think you are. And then up it by 10, 15%. And that's what he does. It's, it's insane. Yeah. That, that is why. <laughs> not six figures. Sorry. Eight figures, nine figures more. It's crazy. Can you believe it. Former owner. Now he's richer, by the way. Former owner so of the much, Charlotte Hornets. So much richer. Yeah. Future owner of the Bulls. I'll say it here. I mean, he should be. He should be. And, and they're just going to expand more. It, it, whatever. Whatever. It is what it is. Uh, and then one last tidbit, Zach. Speaking yeah. of the Olympics. Okay. The Pro Bowl. <laughs> We're not going to really yes. talk about it, but here's what I want to know. I couldn't okay. have been less into the flag football thing. We kind of talked about it. Worst part of the Pro Bowl, yes. You know what I was really out on? All what? of the Olympic talk, where they like would bring on the, yeah, the yeah. Olympic flag football coach, and he's like, well, they're pretty good, but we got some work to do. Shut the fuck up, dude. It's Tyreek Hill. Got, yeah. Take your gold. What the hell are you talking about? Don't talk to me about how the defenders need to get better at technique. So stupid. So We're st- going to put Miles <laughs> Garrett out there and see how that goes. What if oh we just God. play around for a bit, huh? 
we should just have every country should be allowed to have two teams because I want to have fun with one of our teams. We'll have a good team and then I want a team of just the funniest fucking monsters of all time. Oh, that's very funny. I think we should run a simulation and we see what is the youngest age of coach we can have while we still win the gold. Cause I think we can win with an eight year old. Yeah. I, I think you go younger. I think we could get somebody in the hospital the morning of and probably just beat the shit out of it. They have to listen to the baby. They have to listen to the baby, and I still think we put up 14 on everybody. Oh, I mean, easy. All you got to do is have Tyree kill and then have Patrick Mahomes throwing to him again. Like, That's whatever. Right. Baby's first words, go route. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it's incredible. Yeah. The next Belichick, they'll say. Yeah. And then they'll get ran out of town. It's just crazy. Like the in height, the in the height, <laughs> the new heights podcast has been talking about like doing a game where it's like all linemen. Yeah. That would be good. Be great. But yeah, we should for sure send two teams and I want one of them to either be all monsters, which I think is great. Uh, three options. You tell me what you prefer. Like the all monster team of just mm. crazy guys. One team that is just guys who have been retired five years or more. I want like that'd be super Ocho fun. Cinco and them. Yeah, that's or very fun. Team three. The uh, I I just wanted the uh, the American Conference. I just wanted Cincinnati. <laughs> I just want that <laughs> conference to represent us. We pick a conference out of a hat. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit, NFC South. No. Yeah. No, oh, no, that's no, no. good. I meant in college. I think we picked oh, a college oh, gotcha, conference gotcha, gotcha. out of that. That's what I was going for. So literally the Bearcats. I want to send the Bearcats. Let's get the fun belt going. Get them. Send them overseas. Well, I like the idea every year we pick out a random one. So I'd like to, the first year to be like either the American Conference or whatever the fuck Tulsa's in. And like we send American. one of the Mountain West. What are they up to? We send them and everyone. We barely win. And then they're like, mm -hmm. oh, maybe next year. And then we draw the SEC. That's yeah. that's what I want to happen. That would be good. I mean, don't look down. Maybe the Big Ten is the new SEC. We got fucking Chip Kelly as a coordinator for no reason because he because he hated UCLA that much. Maybe I don't know, dude. Maybe it is. I uh, you know go Michigan. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, Big Ten conversation for a different day but the big 10 just the coaches and it, it's gonna be scary in ohio state if they do not win the championship that's pathetic with like they got their whole recruiting class and then all of alabama like a bunch of alabamas just yeah. went there like and then chip kelly like chip kelly's over there it's so stupid they, they should and he's gonna be the play caller so yeah bill o'brien was there for three days that's got to have an impact on the organization. That's pretty good. Well, I think we got three other Chanel's coming through, so watch out. Bring, bring with, it. Leo Chanel, two-time, two-time Super Bowl champion. With your Kansas City Chiefs, Zach, that's as good a segue as we're going to get. Thank you to the Chanel brothers once again. Go Grantsburg. Uh, yeah. But this was a game of two halves, and <laughs> some would say a game of three halves. Whoa, that is true. Because we rare got an overtime. Yeah. And was this the best boring game of all time? Um, <laughs> yes. It, I, I, the, my only um was, I was going to say it wasn't boring, but that's not true. There, there was definitely, the third quarter was bad. Um, I mean, second quarter wasn't great. Fourth quarter was really good, though. Fourth quarter was awesome. You tell me what band am I thinking of? Because I feel like there's a band analogy here of like a band you'd have to call good. Like it's like I don't know if I've ever listened to them all the time or whatever. But yeah, they're good. Of course, they're good. But I don't know. You know, like when am I going to listen to you two? I feel like this was the YouTube. So I I guess they're good. No, they are not. The one that came to mind for me, and it's definitely personal to just me, but it's the Rolling Stones. Oh like, yes, they're legends. Will I ever listen to their music? No. No. Oh, you know who they are? For me, anyway, dude. This is Nirvana. Oh sure. What a moment. That. Yeah, it's great. I mean, yeah, Nirvana. It's good. It's good. Grunge. Yeah. Overtime. Yeah. Cool. You know. 
Do you think most people think about Sublime in that way? Do you think most people think about Sublime? <laughs> I'm, I'm just kind of taking a trip through the Hot Topic shirt rack right now. Because you got Nirvana, we got Rolling Stones. I feel like Sublime's in there. I'd give 100 bucks to someone who could name two Sublime songs on the street. I mean, besides me? Because I love Sublime. Not you, Sublime. dude. No, not you. I'm not offering it up to you. I, I mean, we could... If we could just like get a pool of like 100 people who own a Sublime shirt and ask them that question, that'd be fun. That'd be super fun. I, you're making me pull the people in a Sublime shirt. That'd be funny. How many no, people? No, no. It's st- I'm just saying most people wear the Sublime shirt because it's like a cool uh, vintage true. shirt. It's not even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, yeah, it's true. I don't got no crystal ball. But what's the word he says before that? Nobody knows. <laughs> I feel like Pearl Jam is in this too, in this whole Ooh, conversation. Maybe right in the conversation as the Super Bowl Zach. So to me, story of the Super Bowl is twofold. One, the 49ers kind of dying on their own sword of nitpicking, you know, the small mistakes until you lose. Mm-hmm which I think is great after doing that to two teams in a row, I've just like made one more mistake than the other team did. So I like, I do you feel like the 49ers were nervous when they went into the half leading? I, I, I think the exact opposite. I feel like they were feeling themselves. And I think Kyle Shanahan just did the exact thing he already did two times before that. Like he, this is what he does. He chokes. Uh, and he, it was the most predictable thing of all time. It is uh, Mike McCarthyan. It's Lafleurian for the Packers listeners. Like the whole first half, it's like Christian McCaffrey is unstoppable. Yeah, that's crazy. He's so good. Third quarter, let's let's see if we can still keep the lead without letting him touch the ball. Let, let, that's a fun little game for us to play. And then fourth quarter and overtime, he was unstoppable again. But like I think they went three and out three times in a row to start the half. When you have a lead against the Chiefs, why would you not try to eat as much clock as physically possible? I don't. It's insane. And then, I don't know. I No one really talked on this in a sport where, like, you know, we almost rode Dan Campbell out of town because he was so aggressive. But yeah. out of a game where they abandon the run, they get way too, like, trigger happy. They're, like, doing weird trick plays when they're up 10 instead of just handing the ball to McCaffrey. Then we yeah. get to overtime. And we kick a field goal? We we take the ball first and we kick a field goal? Well, have you heard the drama surrounding this post game? No, maybe not. Besides my Pete, uh, my, my theory for my dad, which I let's, let's hear that first. Let's hear Pete's. My theory. dad thinks that the captain didn't know what was going on. My dad thinks they sent out a guy who uh was just excited to be there. Interesting. So he thinks Kyle Yuschek, Harvard grad, didn't know what was happening. You, you listen. I don't want to. Now I'm speaking, but yeah, my dad's an idiot. I don't know. Yeah, I think. Uh, okay, do you want he, me to tell you the real story? Yeah. So Kyle Yuschek was uh, interviewed after the game, and he said he didn't know the overtime rules. And then Eric Armstead was also interviewed. He also said he didn't know the overtime rules. So Jake, your dad is one thousand percent correct, as he should be. Dude, and by the dad way, dad he here, only, Harvard grads here. That's what we and then say. they asked the Chiefs the same thing. And uh, I think it was Frank Clark and somebody else said every single week during the playoffs to this point, they have had a PowerPoint presentation every week about the new overtime rules because it could come up. And then flash to Shanahan, the head coach who also coached in the only other overtime game in Super Bowl history and blew the 28 to three lead against the Patriots while with the Falcons, like he didn't have his team coached and everyone's like okay this this is the genius this is the guy yeah. like everything and it's like the, apparently they had no idea what the rules were they thought this is the thing that bothers me though they kept saying and they're using it as an excuse like we thought if we got the ball and we scored first then we won that's it that's the overtime rules but it switches for the playoffs for people who don't know but even still okay nothing changes though you didn't score a touchdown that part's been that way since 2011. What are we doing? Yeah. Well, but like even still, I don't know why that's an excuse. You didn't score a touchdown. That's only an excuse if you scored a touchdown. You rushed the field. You got a penalty for celebrating because you thought the game was done. That's the only way that becomes relevant. 
Who cares? It's so dumb. It's also just like, yeah, I get it. I get it. Everything's a reason for itself. So they didn't know, and then they did it. Whatever. You can't take the ball first. That's crazy. No. You yeah. take the ball first, only one world. You you go for it on every fourth down. The only reason to take the ball first is to put all the pressure in the world on them, which still wouldn't be my strategy. But you don't do yeah. that by kicking a fucking field goal your first chance at doing so. And by the by the way, if the if the 49ers didn't score any points, I feel like they get the ball back. I feel like they do stop the Chiefs because the Chiefs would have been way more passive, by the way. So, like to your point, for sure go all in. And I guess that's the excuse. Like the Chiefs went for it on a number of fourth downs, right? Because they had to. And maybe yeah. the 49ers would have gone for it on fourth down and maybe they would have converted. But whatever. Well, it's like I don't know if excuse is much one more example of like poor coaching letting go slash like poor game management because that's bad. Um, I I mean, there's a few plays my brain goes to. To me, sticking in overtime in the end end of the game, call a fucking timeout. What are yeah. we doing? Your team doesn't know what happens when that overtime clock hits zero. They just right. have no clue. I also – Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's part of the strategy. But, like, I don't really like the clock in overtime, I don't think. Because well, they bled the clock so much, and the fact that the Chiefs could have possibly lost that because they ran out of time, I don't like that. When it would have just gone into a – it doesn't make any sense. It would have just gone into another quarter of overtime. Um, right. It's weird. When it's weird, and I, I sincerely think it helped the Chiefs win that game. I think it's smart by them. I'm not saying they cheated, but like the Chiefs knew they were better coached uh, mm -hmm. again. But you can see it in that play. The the half of the 49ers defense doesn't know what happens when that clock hits zero. And the other half is just certain that they're not going to run another play. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was insane. It, it was a complete, they completely fell apart like mentally. And again, I, can't say this enough this is what Shanahan teams do it's insane and it's almost like people are chalking it up to bad luck again though but this isn't the NFC championship from last year where very clearly it was bad luck I mean they had three quarterbacks go out in like three drives in a row but people are talking about Dre Greenlaw popping his Achilles which is insane that's terrible <laughs> that's running terrible. onto the field like I can't even imagine but that's not why they lost they already no. won the game. They chose to lose the game. Yeah, th that is not why they lost. Also, I mean, it's scheme stuff, right? Like, sure, when things like, yeah, they missed an extra point, but it got fucking blocked. Like, yeah, yeah. He, he didn't. The, it's not like it was a mental mistake. No, the Chiefs won that game. Not a mistake at all. Um, And also, like, my only shit talk on the 49ers is, like, we got to make some adjustments <laughs> like they do. They didn't know how to play with a fucking lead. And like on defense, too, I yeah. I was losing my mind. I had folks over. I was losing my mind and people were making fun of me because I was walking around my living room going, how did they not fucking know that Mahomes <laughs> and Kelsey were going to run an option on yeah. that fourth down conversion? It's like, yeah, what are we doing? It's the one play. Of course, they're going to run that. Yeah. Look good too. Look good. It looked good. I know it's a hard play to stop, but it's the Super Bowl. We can't get a DN to stay home. Well, they didn't have any, they were outnumbered <laughs> over there too. So it was I just... know it was a great play. I do and hey, 49ers fans, sure. I think there were moments of unlock. I I think obviously Debo more consistently healthy helps you. For sure. It, you For know, sure. truly, truly, all you have to do is give the ball to McCaffrey more and you win. I mean <sighs> I agree completely. Also, like Purdy had some moments of just not good. No, but clock management and everything else. I, I don't know. That's but not new. I haven't really watched sports talk today. So if you have, maybe you can tell I me. I have a little. Yeah. I don't think anyone is even mentioning Purdy. I feel like he's been completely forgotten about in this entire thing. Other the than people only, are being like, played pretty good. The only mention is I heard a little bit of if they have a different quarterback with more confidence, like if it was Mahomes there, they never take that field goal or like where okay. was his moment to drive it down the field, you know? And by the way, you can do that with a lot of quarterbacks there. 
Farms out there, no way they take the field goal. <laughs> that's true. That is true. That's yeah. You know, that's a great point. No way. It, it's it's so. What? By the way, <laughs> I mean Jake Moody, rookie kicker, has been bad all year long. Finally has that confidence building. Yeah. New Super Bowl record field goal. What a I mean from the lowest to the highs and. Uh, Harrison, what are you doing over there? What are you doing? Oh, my Super Bowl record is gone already. Harrison, I sincerely it. wanted them to win on a field goal because I wanted us to be like, should we give the trophy to Harrison Bucker? There's like a moment like yeah. I'm like, he might deserve it. But before that final touchdown drive, I think for the Chiefs, he for sure deserved it. And for the 49ers, I think if they won, it's Jawan Jennings for sure, which is insane. I think for the 49ers, I agree with you. But, you know, if they had won, ah, that's true. If they had just held on by that field goal, maybe it's him. I guess in my world, like if they had tied it again and gone back, if McCaffrey had scored, it would have been him. And if Purdy had thrown something, it would have been him. But I agree. But if everything else stayed the same, maybe like, Jennings. It ha- has to be. He's scored two touchdowns, one as a passer. True. I'd want it to be Trent Williams. It should be. Big game. I mean, they, should, they should just give it to a full offensive line or something. That would be fun. Yeah. I uh, uh Overall, I was pretty happy with the game. I We kind of teased it. I'm thrilled that we're just out and out like heel Chiefs now. Yes. We yeah. turned heel halfway through the game. <laughs> they did. They absolutely did. <laughs> but, Travis yeah, Kelsey it, mugged our favorite coach. <laughs> that people were losing their mind like that thug i can't believe he's on this team he should be benched he should be cut it's people how could were Taylor talking Dink about it cut? like it was a heel turn like he waited yeah. till andy was distracted to <laughs> yeah. attack him like he wasn't trying to tell him something like he was just like do you see him wait for that old man to turn his back before he uh. pushed him yeah. You, see, you see Noah Gray bending over behind him? He was gonna fucking topple him over. That's not cool. Yeah, that was it. That was absolutely insane. But truly, yeah, they are full heel. I don't think there's any coming back from this in the best way possible. Yeah. But now we need Andy to lean into it. That's the that's the final step. If Andy Reid starts to be a little cocky, if he has a really good, you know, like parade speech, he's cocky. He's like, see you next year doing that like Travis Kelsey did. If he can do all of that, then here we go. By the way, Andy Reid, 110%, which is probably a good coach trait. The motions died down, everything else. Andy Reid, you know, the press conference afterwards was just his heat a moment. We all want to win, da-da-da-da-da-da. Next Mm -hmm. time he's in a room alone with Trav, yeah. It's like you ever fucking touch me. <laughs> like it's oh. he's for sure. Like I think it's like yeah. a stern. Like, hey, I, I think that legit will happen. Actually, yeah, for sure. We're on the same fucking team. Yeah. Don't push me. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't understand how that is actually Andy Reid. Yeah, like, he's not some nice little Mormon boy. Like he is. Uh, he's a hard ass. Like no. he'll chew people's asses out, and then he gets in front of the camera. He's like talking about chicken nuggets and stuff yeah it's, it's a bit he has a bit with the media yeah with the boys he's a hard ass so i think for sure yeah. like which is why i think he was fine with it because he's for sure, for sure shoved for sure. travis like that before it's just travis is a little sturdier well that and it's what's tra what is travis yelling about i it's get me the ball keep me on the field yeah which is fine that's good he should be demanding the ball and wanting the ball that's great if anything, he just startled him. He just took the big guy by surprise. Well, that's I think that's what Andy said, basically. Yeah, yeah like, basically. I just didn't see him there. I lost my balance. Andy was yeah. upset because he was upset it was a storyline. And he was, I think his joke was uh, if I just had better balance, no one would be talking about it. Like, he's got to be like, well, I was going to retire, but now I need to come back and run Travis's ass all trading camp. <laughs> that's what he needs to say. That's true. I do love that. Or. How about this storyline? Hmm. Nick Sirianni, bit of a hot seat. We get yeah. one more Andy run. Andy and Jason out in Philly. Yeah. A little that'd action. Be, you know? That'd be fun. That'd be great. He's Andy's the only one I'm like, I don't think you can turn Andy heel. 
I don't think so. Yeah, he is way too likable. Yeah, I even when I didn't super like him in like the Alex Smith era, it was more that he was a a joke than like yes, a heel. Yes. You know, um, so I but interesting. But in case you didn't hear that, I mean, full on heel turn afterwards of like. Two of my favorite quotes, Mahomes straight up being like, gone are the days, Zach, of no one believed in us. Instead, Mm -hmm. we went into every game as the favorite. Everyone knew what was coming, and we still came. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then Travis with the see you next year and the grin on the way off the podium. We're here, dude. He's singing Elvis. He's going to be incredible at the parade. It's going to be so obnoxious. I hope... He wears the mummer suit if Jason is retiring. Right. I mean, that's the way to announce a retirement speech. Yeah. Or like announce that he's going out. I really hope he does. My favorite part about Travis is he's never, ever, ever improved as a public speaker. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> he's just <laughs> sheer volume, sheer yeah. volume. Like, and by the way, there are guys like that on every football team. I was oh, thinking yeah. about watching that of like Patrick Mahomes is the guy's. We come together, we do this thing. And Travis is the guy who practices, goes, if you jump off sides, I'm going to break your fucking neck. And like, it's like, okay, thank you, Travis. You know those, like, little toy microphones from, like, the 90s? <laughs> yeah. That, like, you scream into it, it's like, ooh, like, it's, like, it vibrates or whatever. He always had that as a kid, and he, he thinks every microphone's like that. So he gets it, he just screams at the top of his fucking lungs. He's who did he say? Music. He said who his favorite wrestler was. He's like, it's The Rock. But then he's like, my other favorite wrestler. And I was like, that is the least surprise. Oh, Ultimate Warrior. And I'm like, that's oh. the least surprising <laughs> thing I've ever heard in my life. Just yell and shake as loud as you yeah. can. Like, ah, the, the universe <laughs> in my veins. Um, but I love him every time he's up. So I can't wait for yeah. that, but it was, you know, it was a good story, good game, and I'm sincerely ready for, like, the league versus the Chiefs. Like, finally, mm-hmm. we can, like, stop pretending like we're all rooting for them and just go. It's going to be so interesting if somehow Andy Reid's persona can evolve into what we think of Bill Belichick is. Like, that Darth Vader that's almost, true. like, evil leader. Like, that's what... Everyone I just reading I think as. yeah that's true I think he'd have a better chance of coming across just very cocky and For like sure. yeah, yeah 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 like so lackadaisical because we're always gonna win but I oh you know what was the other Patrick line where I was like this is I'm getting heated which is a good sign for this after promo mm-hmm. winning three in a row has always been the goal yeah 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 and now folks just know about it what what are you talking about that's crazy. <laughs> We just needed three. We we were not we're not happy now. We are will be happy next year. When that was where I'm one. like, we're it was like they didn't care about this game. Exactly. Uh, who did we play? Don't even remember. We're, we're, That's so that. true. Who do you yeah. feel? Do you feel like there's anyone they really? I I feel like we're kind of setting up as much as I was teasing. Like who knows? Maybe another Kelsey Bowl. I honestly feel like give me Dan Campbell. And the Lions. I mean, that, for sure. That's the David and Goliath. Or the NFL. If if, if this is Vince McMahon's NFL, the real yeah. baby face, the real one, you know, the Packers. God. We've got I mean, our quarterback. We're young. We're very young. Jay, and- I've been I've been reminded so much today. Pretty much every time you can step outside in Wisconsin right now. Did you know the Packers beat the Chiefs this year? So next year. It's a shoe in because who are we going to run into? The Chiefs? We already beat them. Jordan Love beat them. He destroyed them. Don't okay. don't tell me who st- was at inside linebacker in that game for the Chiefs. I don't remember. I don't think the Chiefs now. I don't think he's on the team anymore. But that's fine. But yeah, Packers Twitter has been insane. But um, before we get off of the Super Bowl, I assume you watch the normal Super Bowl coverage, right? Yeah, I didn't turn on Nickelodeon. We watched the second half on Nickelodeon and you overtime. You watched I guess. the whole second half, Jake. It was fucking electric. It was so much fun. Wasn't it, it SpongeBob? Was... 
SpongeBob and Patrick, the actual voice actors, were doing it. They had Sandy Cheeks as a fucking sideline reporter, uh, which she cut a great promo, uh, basically being like, how are the quarterbacks looking over there? And she kind of cut a promo on Brock Purdy. <laughs> like it was like, you know, he's doing fine, but I would be, I, I, I'm like, obviously I'm a little biased for the quarterback from the best state in America, Texas. <laughs> it was incredible because of Mahomes is great. We had uh, Larry, the lobster, like a weird 3D thing of him on the field that sort of charged at players. <laughs> it was pretty great. Um, Squidward, they kept flashing to him. They had an ongoing bit. He was in line at the bathroom. He wasn't able to watch the Super Bowl. Then he finally got to his seat. And then what could only be described as Jake Osman in front of him, a way too tall guy in a Hawaiian shirt. So Squidward <laughs> couldn't see. That was funny. But uh, they, so it was Nate Burleson yeah. and whatever Eagle. They were, you know, very much introducing football to people. And then the two voice actors got to just do bit after bit after That's bit. so funny. It was so funny. They started off the second half when I first turned it on. It was the, I was in tears. It was so funny. It was essentially they learned football terms in uh, the halftime because they're learning about football. And it was basically what we did on this podcast of, right. before. They're like, hook and ladder, blah, 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 go back and forth. And then it ended with, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Crab's favorite, the old nickel and dive, and I lost it. It was nickel and dive is a great football term. It was it so is. funny. That's so gr- funny. That is so clever, dude. That's so it funny. Was- and then when there was a penalty, Dora the Explorer popped up to explain the penalty, which was actually kind of helpful for some people. But she also got a pretty nice dig at the 49ers at one point. Uh, uh, she said something about. Uh, Maybe the 49ers need to, a map to find the end zone. Pretty oh, good. Whoa. <laughs> he is pretty good. These voice actors were having the time of their life. They did so good. It was very funny. Very funny. Okay. Oh, Patrick, by it was it was for us, by the way. Okay. Patrick was obsessed with one player in the game. Who do you think it was? Oh my god. Was it George Kittle? The 49ers punter, Wisnowski. <laughs> yes. He loved him. He kept hyping him up. He's like, yes, Wisnowski's on the field. It was so funny. I that... honestly recommend going back and watching the Super Bowl, just the Nickelodeon coverage. Dude, get a little high. If that's yeah. your thing. Get in there. That'd be, man, if that was your thing, that'd be fun. You know what I want? One, maybe I'll watch the Nickelodeon version next year because that sounds electric. Two. Yeah. Give me a Muppets yes. Super Bowl. Oh, 100%. my God. And I, I want the two old men to be in the broadcast booth. Of course. Of course. Yeah. In the broadcast booth or they're like the officiating experts that you call in. To, yes. Uh, or whatever. Yeah. That'd be so many good bits. So funny. So it's like funny. whenever Cookie Monster shows up on anything and he's electric. Cookie. Yeah. Cookie Monster always hits. So that good. Is good. Now it was it was good. Any commercials trip your trigger? Um, I had a couple that I, I was like, "That's genuinely very good." Really I'm not sure that. if I heard it correctly. So the Dunkin' Donuts commercial with Ben Affleck and all of them. <laughs> Did Ben Affleck call his group the Boston Massacre? I think so. That's insane. No one's talking about that. I've heard people be like, "That was a weird commercial" or their favorite commercial. We're not. T- we're just glossing over that. Hey man, it's a you know a revolutionary war pun. Okay, I also I'm was there any Budweiser commercial or no? Yeah, yeah. Second half. Yeah, second half. Okay, I think Nickelodeon didn't have all the commercials. That's fair. I loved the Christopher Walken commercial. That was a good one. That was actually a very good one. Because I was I had a moment of like this is his life. It was funny because I yeah. was like, that's a hundred percent what he has to go through all day. Nightmare. Absolute <laughs> nightmare. He's so famous from the SNL skit too. Yeah. Uh, Blue Oyster Cult one. It, he has to regret it so much. So much. So that was very funny. Um, I like the Arnold Schwarzenegger, Danny DeVito one. Neighbor. That was good. <laughs> They're doing a movie together again, right? 
I heard. Oh, I didn't hear that. I, I think so. I think so, which will be great. The other movie, really quick. I don't think there was a preview during the commercial for it. Planet of the Apes, though, that actually kind of looks cool. Um, the new Ghostbusters that they're doing, I think they finally figured it out. This movie's gonna fucking smash. It's gonna be they got all the old guys back. And oh, let's just add in Paul Rudd. Bingo. We, we figured you it out. You do know. I don't think you do. There was a Paul Rudd Ghostbusters already. Really? Well, this is great. What I've seen so far, fantastic. This is what they need. They need Bill Murray and Paul Rudd to share the screen. That's that's mad. true. We need more of the old guys. They were like teased in the last one. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. I We talked about it before the Super Bowl because it leaked, but the Patrick Stewart Creed commercial. Yeah. Did they do the full thing on your one? No. Or? The shorter okay, yeah, version. They yeah, they didn't have Creed in it. I'm like, okay. Well, that's not oh, fun. Creed was in ours. Creed was in ours. They didn't just oh, really? didn't do the whole, whole thing. But yeah, no, we still got Creed. Can you take it's so disappointing they cut it off after like 20 seconds like creed didn't even show up yet oh we got the whole one that is weird but yeah no some good ones but no that was good uh the temu commercial that's been the talk of the town yeah dude we gotta stop letting just anybody get a commercial no kidding let's not sell our soul to china damn it or actually I'm not sure if you saw this. Actually, we it. should sell our soul to China. Actually, you know what? Actually, bring it on. More money. Um, <laughs> in, I think, three states, very few states got a commercial that nobody else got. And it was Kanye. Kanye bought a commercial. No. And it was kind of genius. It was kind of incredible. It's very funny. Even Kanye haters will think it's funny, I think. He spent $7 million to get the ad spot and it's just him on his phone essentially uh just be like i spent so much money on the, the ad spot we couldn't spend no money on the commercial uh i just want to tell you to go to yeezy.com and then he spells yeezy.com he's like i'm just gonna i'll put it down below for you and it's just like flashing yeezy.com he's like we got shoes and uh that's about it <laughs> that's the whole commercial it's very funny He's a funny dude. I, I, you know, some ways more than others, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I like that. I, I, what was the other one where I was like, what's going on? Oh my God. Claire can stop laughing at the Jesus doesn't hate people. Jesus washes feet. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't need a foot fetish. Jesus commercial. They didn't really get the internet really went off on that. Well, like, listen, we can handle a metaphor. The whole thing was a metaphor, and then you ended with a very literal tagline. They had one last year, too, and people were upset by it, and they kept the same tagline. So, yeah, so. Move. yeah some weird ones. I don't know, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I um, liked uh, the guy from Shit's Creek popping up in a few of them. Love a running bit commercial. Yes. That, I feel like... <laughs> I mean, this is, I feel like you really get your value when you buy like three ad spots, which I understand it's the Super Bowl, but like Tebu was like four or five times. And like when you could have a running bit like that, that's when it's memorable because that's I think it was Bud Light. Talking. I was very impressed by, I think, the Bud Light Genie. I don't know if I saw it. So in the second half, it was like you rub this bottle and a genie comes out, some beer. But the whole commercial is like wishing for different things. And they're cute and kind of funny. One of them I like because they were like, I wish Payne Manning was my best friend. And Payne Manning got there. And then he was like, I wish I had a different best friend. Like he other wish just wish, which was good. Um, but the last thing in the commercial was, I wish we got to meet Post Malone. And mm -hmm. commercial ends, comes back to the game. All the actors from the commercial are sat next to Post Malone. That's good. That's good, but you can't run it ever again. You'd cut it somewhere, you know, yeah, probably at the Payne Manning true. stuff. But uh, no, I thought, you know, pretty pretty good overall show. Yeah. yeah Purple Gatorade. Purple Who's Gatorade. Out? Yeah. <laughs> Sliding out. We didn't mention the Kawasaki commercial. Stone Cold Steve Austin with the fucking mullet. That's good. I didn't see that one. That was one of the first ones. Very early. Oh, okay. I'll have to watch that again. Um, 
Yeah, we, I did mention that one. I didn't see it, but no. Yeah, it was surprising. Can... I've never seen a Kawasaki commercial, I don't think. Yeah. But it, it was good. But yeah, overall, I think, I mean, truly, I think it was a football fan Super Bowl, I think. I think it was a like good game as a close game. I think get, having overtime in the Super Bowl is legendary. I actually think it was a pretty great, for folks actually watching, a pretty great casual fan Super Bowl because sure. good Usher halftime show, like easy watch, mm-hmm. good commercials, and a close game with a clear rooting interest. Yeah, they definitely did the, did the CBS broadcast. I think we got different camera angles, camera angles for sure too, which is wild. Um, they showed Taylor Swift so much in that fourth quarter overtime. Did yes. they do it for you too? Okay. Yeah. Which whatever, CC Sabathia is behind her, which is fun. I oh. love CC Sabathia. Me too. My only thing with the Taylor Swift thing was they she had a very clear rotation. For the people yeah. by her, and that was I'm like, come on, that he had fucking ice spice flashing devil signs. What are we doing? We don't need that. While Taylor Swift was pounding a can of wine, she was doing the devil sign. Like if you had a rotation in your press box out of our family. Who's first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter? That's very interesting. Okay, so I think I think first quarter is going to be Dan. I think Dan's oh, you start to- off with Dan. Okay. Yeah, I think Dan's there to get the party started. Uh, you and I both know Dan very well. I think fourth Bloody quarter Dan. Dan, fourth quarter Dan, Dan's going to be checked out. He yeah. could be very drunk. He could be in the toilet. So let's get Dan at his best self in the first quarter. Right He'll start the party. It'll be good. Um, Quarter two. So, you know, interest in the game may be dipping a little bit. I think but- that's where you throw in Emily. Yes, yes, yes. Let's put Emily there. I don't want her coming out of the second half. So yeah, Unsure like of how much time is left in the game. Yes. Uh, she vaguely watched the first quarter, but she remembers everything wrong about it. Yeah. So, yeah, we're kind of explaining, kind of trying to watch. Yes. Third quarter. I. You know what? For me, maybe it's different for you. For third quarter, I want Pete. I want Pete there. We're going to talk about what just happened. Yes, just... Pete was my pick. Let's. Pete yeah. has no interest in the halftime show. Pete's back on the game. True. True. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He didn't even know there was a halftime show. He was so focused on the game. And for me, there's a clear fourth quarter. Who's that? We want emotion. We want anger. We want investment. No yeah. one's being Grandma Norma in That's the fourth true. quarter. Fourth quarter, Grandma. I need you for 15 minutes. I'm in. Yes. Yes, and then but though Jake, this Super Bowl, uh oh, clock hits zero, tied up. Who are you bringing in for overtime? Who are you bringing in for overtime? Um, <laughs> I might bring back in Dan. Yeah, I mean, if it's an option for sure, for sure, um, a little check in, either a little check in or in overtime. <laughs> I don't know. It was last night. Claire's got a lot of like alarm all the time. So Claire was just like the whole overtime was like, is it over? <laughs> it's done. So I kind of like that. But otherwise, oh, overtime? Give me Jeremy. Ooh, yeah. Jeremy would be a good one. He's very checked in. He's very, very emotional about it. And sure. in overtime, he's walking into overtime with like two open brewskis. He's like, here we fucking go, boys. Yes, a tie yes. game. Yeah, that's good. I think he'd be good. Maybe he'd Tony. Be good. Tony would be great. Tony, I mean, he's kind of the halftime performer, too. <laughs> it's true. I, I mean, I think that's a pretty solid rotation. I think you can in, – Hannah's listening. You can sub Hannah in for an easy second quarter. Her Hannah and Emily maybe together. They're with Emily. I mean, they could take each other in and out, I think. I think that's very good. I think, you know, halftime show – Maybe a little Sarah action. Talk me through what's going on. That could be fun. Of course. Of course. Of course. I, of course. Get a little get, get a little just, shine in there. Just shove Marie in there and you know away we go. A side comment and see what she has to say. That'd be fun. I think if the th- third quarter's a real snooze fest, we sneak Aunt Janet in there with my dad. Sure. Sure. Good story. Or your dad and Chuck too. 
that could be fun. Oh, that's good. Some good stories. Yeah, get those mm-hmm. going. I like that. Yeah. I like the idea of my dad and Aunt Janet both not being pessimists. <laughs> like they would take turns being like, it's over. It's not over. Believe. And then the you other one would do each it. other out for sure. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, I mean, good Super Bowl. Like I said before, the game is the perfect matchup. I think it played out perfectly. I liked everything about it. I loved the result. If only George Kittle could have gotten to 20 yards and Travis Kelsey could have caught a touchdown, I would be in a different mood today, I will say. You know, turns out I still profited. Turns out pretty much everything would have hit if that happened. So, oh, well, oh, well, we're still good to go. It's a good day for bets, you know. It was good. I mean, the sports books lost terribly. Uh, they because everyone was so heavy on the Chiefs, and they were so sure the 49ers were. They lost so much money. It's insane. This is my base and they, of sympathy. And, and they had to pay out a shit ton of money because true, they had to pay out a shit ton of money for the people who bet that the game was going to go to overtime. Because that's no one true. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. No one bet the game wasn't going to go to overtime. <laughs> like that's a stupid bet. True. Yeah, so it's like some people got random money there. The spread hit for some folks. Um, yeah. The Purple hit. Gatorade was the favorite. Heads was the favorite. Um, Wild that purple was the favorite in the hit. Like I feel like that's the first yeah. time in forever that the favorite hit. Yeah, that's true. I kind of feel like Chiefs are going to just go purple every year. At this point, I, I was wondering if they'd go back to their first Super Bowl win, but I, I bet the year they lost the Super Bowl, they were orange, and now they're like, we're on a roll. It's not change anything. We're going purple. Yeah. What be the color if it came out? You judge them, because for me, it's like if I saw the, if I saw pink, what are we doing? Pink's weird. Honestly, red. I feel like red Gatorade. I'd be like, what are we? You, you're drinking your fruit punch. That's cute, Patrick. Like, oh, dark blue. If I see some dark blue, what are we yeah. doing? We couldn't afford Glacial Rush. I mean, that's true. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, you ever had that moment? Maybe it's because it's like everyone's had that moment as a kid. Can I have a blue Gatorade? No, not that blue. Yeah, <laughs> like that's, they that's show up and it's like, God damn it. I mean, I did the same thing with purple, to be fair. Like, I, I'll, purple, yes. no, I don't want grape. I want Riptide Rush, which is, yeah, that's right. So good. It's not a made up flavor. I don't want it. No. I, yes, I know what Riptide Rush tastes like. Don't t- ask me to describe it. That's I right. know the flavor. It tastes like a rush. But yeah, good game. We're about an hour in. Like I said, this is the season finale. So before we play maybe a final game before we get out of here, just know we are going on a bit of a hiatus. But the season ain't the Ocho Flurry Sports uh, podcast season. Uh, we got big plans. It's going to be a fun one. Yeah. I'm going to say anticipated. Maybe we'll do something short when we are leading up to get season eight going. Anticipated return will be around March Madness time would be my guess. Right, Jake? You can't, I feel. Wait, you can't keep us away from Abilene Christian. That's true. That's People true. Wait. I feel like we're going to see a deep. Who? What team do I want to call out? BYU's kind of got something about them. <laughs> do they? Do that. The Cougs. <laughs> that that is true. That is true. I They're mean really good. They're soaking in the competition. Ooh, very good. Very it's good. Mormon. Very- Look that up at your own peril. <laughs> soaking in quaking, earthquaking. Um I, I, I hear Gonzaga's bad this year. I don't think I believe it. So maybe, maybe they're gonna make a run finally. That's like how every time I look at the rankings, it's like, what's happening in the big east? I don't believe you. You who's still in the Big East? I think you all the top teams, Connecticut, Marquette, and Big, oh yeah, the Marquette is in there. Are all good, and I'm missing one other one that's really good this year. But Illinois, yeah, that's when we'll be good? back around that time. By the way, happy baseball season. We're here. <laughs> Pitchers and catchers reported today, Zach. We're back. True. Okay. So are they doing? Okay, spring training. When spring training technically start? Is that like March? March for March one, very end of February. Jesus. Okay, so we are back. We actually are here. Yeah, we're here. Opening day is uh, for most teams March twenty six. 
that surprises me every year. It, it feels like a it feels like a that's joke. the real March Madness. <laughs> it feels like a prank. March twenty sixth, really. That's wild. Very last week in March, and then all of April we're playing baseball. Jake, I think they're starting too early. I think there might be too many games. I don't know. I it's I would be fine. I can't believe I'm saying this. It's the only schedule where I'm less concerned about the games than I am about the year. Make them play three fucking games a day. I don't care. It's, it can't start in March. No. No, it, it makes zero sense. It makes zero sense. Start it. I mean, technically, it's going to be after Easter this year. I was going to say start it after Easter, but that's not what I truly mean. May? Is that fair? May 1st? I don't know why it doesn't. We can't even start in April. What are we doing? Like, I, I it's got to start. Let's May start would be in great. April and World Series in October. Is that fine? Yeah, that'd be fine. I would love if we could somehow squeeze it May to August. <laughs> be pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it should be. They should set the season up that way. I would take April to August. Yeah. I mean, that's that's still plenty of time. People, still plenty of time. It's still more games than the NBA, and they had to put a rule in to get their fuckers to play. So April to August is five months. That's almost half the year. And that that is so abbreviated from what we have now. Some baseball teams, if they made it into the championship series, were still playing ball second week in November. That's insane. And they started in March. They started in February because of spring training. Yeah. Folks have had off December and January. That's it. They get two months off all year. That's insane, man. Some and folks who missed the playoffs get closer to three or four but has have the athletics checked on a ballpark yet or be <laughs> they got one it's set for 2028 great and this year oakland still <laughs> i mean it's gonna be pop it makes me kind of want to go but i'm also a little afraid that you know it would collapse the day i go they don't want to accidentally get good it's my favorite thing it's like they're like we're not even going to attempt in case suddenly we accidentally have to stay here because we're good that's insane so hey it's baseball time but that's there's going to be a lot of stuff next season i think it's going to be really good but zach we've got one more game for the people on the way out okay let's do it i think a love of yours we haven't talked of much on the show I feel like I could go a lot of ways with the start of that sentence. <laughs> yeah, well, how are we ending this? Um, but, uh, you know, we've talked about Curse of Oak Island. We've mm. talked in the past on, uh, you know, a lot of things that you really enjoy, whether that be, I don't know, Blink or Scrubs, so many different things. But what we haven't touched on, Zach, Big Brother, I mm. feel like we haven't really covered. Your love of like competition sure. shows. Would you say Big Brother is the one? Because you're not that into the like Survivor or the Challenge, right? No, um, the Challenge I think is my favorite. Oh, would, really? Okay. Yeah, I would say Big Johnny Bananas I, guy. I do like Johnny Bananas. I'm a West guy though, through and through. No one wow. for those who don't know, known as sort of the series asshole. Um, he is an arrogant son of a bitch. But boy, boy, do I like him. Um. If I had to do my rankings quickly, it'd probably at the current moment would be Challenge, Survivor, then Big Brother. Big Brother's gotten a little oh. Mickey Mouse. So all those Mickey shows. Mouse. I do like them all, though. I like Amazing Race. I like F-Boy Island. I like, you know, anything with a little competition and a Love little charm. Island. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm it for. is good. Oh, by the way, I, I was trying to figure out a way to shoehorn this into the conversation the past two months, Jake. Greatest greatest television greatest heel on television who do you think it is greatest heel um oh i don't know should i take a get brian bobby Williams. flay oh bobby really flay. absolutely and beat bobby flay any of his shows showed out with bobby flay yeah fucking sign me up that dude is the best. He is so fucking cocky. He is so hateable, and I love him. So him and good. His seven wives, dude. Have you ever watched 
<laughs> we'll get to your camp. Have you ever watched Showdown with Bobby Flay? Do you know the premise? <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. So good. People who don't know. So, like, a lot of times it's like they're filming this uh, restaurant owner, whatever. They have a signature dish. They think it's this big press thing for them. Oh, it's going to be so good. They're doing it or whatever. And then Bobby Flay shows up out of nowhere. He's like, this is this is your this is your signature dish. I'm going to beat you at it. So like this arrogant asshole comes out of nowhere. It's like, this is what you are best at. And then he beats them at it. And he's like, bye. Then he leaves. It's so fucking funny. That show is great. And beat Bobby Flay is great, which is two people compete for the chance to challenge him to a dish again. And then Bobby beats him. Awesome. It is really good. I like that. Man, is there a better heel He's than so that? Good. He's also a host on Worst Cooks in America for like four years. Oh, that and was great at its peak. He, all, all it is is the girls are in love with him, and he's just like shitting. These people are the worst cooks in America. He's like, I'm a better cook than them. Why are you doing this? Like, of course you are, Bobby. We know. It's, it's electric. It's You're a literal iron chef. Oh. <laughs> like, what are we doing? He's um, so funny. I do love that. I like a competition show like that. I loved Cutthroat Kitchen. Yeah, Alton Brown's so good. Alton Brown, oh my God. Iron Chef America. Folks do not give enough love. Alton Brown, mm-hmm. best play-by-play guy in the game, dude. He's, and also, me and my dad still left. There was one episode where it's like, oh, what do you think it's up to? I don't know, but it smells terrible. And then he just kept going. <laughs> and I, was like, I love Alton Brown so much. Um, so good. Yeah, I love a cooking yeah. show. So. I think that's a great call. So I am not really into too much of that stuff. I love a reality dating show. I'd say more of that speed. Folks now, Claire, Mm -hmm. big Bravo version. Well, we recently got into Traders on uh, Peacock. And a lot of, especially this year, like they pulled in, like now all of those places are in there. Like especially multiple Survivor folks, multiple Big Brother folks, and my favorite additions to the cast, multiple challenge folks mm, great and johnny bananas kind of a big target on his back right away dude i watched one video of ct on youtube and now every every youtube video is like is ct, CT in a pit show? ct's tragic love yeah ct's in it he's like oh. the star dude everyone loves yeah, him love CT. yes he keeps making friends with everybody yeah my favorite there's one week where it's like everyone knows who it is it's you. And they like pointed CT and he's like, me, I fucking had your back. It's you. Like he was like the <laughs> defending them. He's like, I was being nice. What the hell? Um, yeah. Dude. You need to watch some okay. classic CT stuff at some point. Oh, I've been watching a lot of video. I saw him in DM's love story. I saw him pick Johnny bananas up like a backpack. Yes. That was still heel CT. D- him and DM is definitely baby face. He's not like this lovable guy that you see. He used to get kicked off of shows because he would fight people. Like he was just this Boston monster asshole. Yeah. What a, and then a girl gets cancer and now he's a good boy. So yeah. Amazing how that that was like I saw like Claire had me watch like an interview show with him. He's like, I don't know what season was. He's like, one season I got overweight. And then I lost him that way and I came back and everyone still treated me like I was overweight. That was the <laughs> that was my favorite because he like came back and he's like, suddenly no one was scared of me. And he's like, yeah. and it was awesome but like he's like i just kind of got to hang around the house i'd get to do something and then i'd win like that's that's so good but the challenge is wild you're just on and you're on it forever basically you gotta be entertaining you don't have to be good you gotta be either super good or entertaining yeah i don't know i think i'd be out of all of those shows i feel like i'd be the best at the challenge but some of it i think would wreck me i can't do a pull-up I don't know, but I think <laughs> yeah. I'm good at a puzzle. Sure. Put yeah, my weight into something. People. I think I could carry someone on my back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. you'd be good. You'd be good there. You just got to not be the biggest target or a complete ass. I think I'd be terrible, big brother. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you probably wouldn't be great. Why do we got to vote anyone off? <laughs> <laughs> just... You'd be telling the truth to everybody. Like, she say this <laughs> and everyone, my friend, I will yeah. say secret assassin on traders, Berkey, because everyone really? knows he's not a traitor. 
Sure. <laughs> That's he fair. can't be. Because one time they were like, are you a traitor? And he's like, no, no. And he started crying. He was like, I, pro- <laughs> I promise I'm trying not to, but I'm not a good liar. And everyone's like, okay, well, we know where Bergie's at. <laughs> Yikes. So maybe okay. that'd be my thing. I don't know. But all of that to say, Zach, that is kind of a love we have. And uh, traitors has sparked that interest in me. And mm-hmm. first season, one of our favorite athletes all time, someone, a master of deception, if you will. Someone so good that he once got the Brazilian authorities to investigate a crime that never happened. Ryan Lochte was on the show. <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, he's entertaining, I'm sure. He's believe it or not, fun. everyone still hated him, which was a little really? wild. Like, kind of ganged up <laughs> on him. <laughs> he is unbelievably hated. That's a, It's kind of <laughs> wild that it stuck with him, in a way. I mean, it's kind of great. Uh, it, for sure, great. He but, came for yeah. Michael Phelps and he had to pay the price. Um, you know, sure. so I that was good. And then I was telling you before the show, but uh Deontay Wilder was on this season and was easily my favorite. Um <laughs> he was just like he would have been so good at it because everyone said he was the most liked in the yeah. house. And every challenge that was my favorite was like it was like CT Johnny Bananas, Dan from Big Brother. Like all these like contestant folks who were like, I'm going to win this challenge. Peter from The Bachelor, like, I'm going to get out there. And then real life world boxing champion Deontay Wilder, like diving into the water and out swimming all of them by like 10 paces. I'm like, yeah, there's an actual real professional athlete, folks. Like (laughs) you're screwed. We're in trouble. Um, But he had to go home, you know, take some time for the mental reps. But uh, made me think, and you picked the show. I think the challenge is the most interesting. If you had to give yeah. me a cast for the challenge, obviously mm-hmm. we're not going to do the whole goddamn thing. But what right. athletes would you like to see on there? For people who don't know, challenge combines, I would Ooh. say, the drama, the strategy, and the competitions, the best out of any of them. It's also a little trashy. It's like, it's definitely it feeds on the drama, but the competitions are still very, very much a part of it. Unlike, you know, Big Brother is more so like Minds Games, Survivors, yeah. you know, more politics. So it combines them all. So what I'd like about it is you athletes. could be bad at the social aspect and just be enough of a beast to yes. stay in the show. Hence CT. For, for yes. <laughs> seems like the first part of his run. Yeah. For sure. For sure. If, yeah. If you're good, if you're good, you're good. Um, okay. So just thinking of athletes across the board, I think you need someone who was crazy before and people are sort of on edge and don't know if they're still crazy okay yeah it, for that i think that should probably be like a meta world piece i thought you were gonna go dennis rob <laughs> oh dennis rob he he doesn't talk enough I, I i feel like he's oh meta's good okay i get that yeah so and again there's there could be a moment where he completely explodes or he may be a changed man and everyone's a little they're tiptoeing around him. Um, you probably need an Antonio Brown who is going to be that insane was where at the challenges. Right away. Everyone hates him. Everyone hates him. Patrick Beverly. Yes. <laughs> by the way, what a fucking trade by the Bucks. That's the most, <laughs> that's the greatest move they've ever pulled off. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, Patrick Beverly is definitely in that's minus. really good. Um, who's, a, yeah. who's just a full good guy, Completely David just... Ortiz. Okay, okay, I'll trust you on that. In baseball, um, yeah, everyone loves Big Poppy. If you're going for a more beloved one, oh, too niche, too niche, but it's us. I mean, Vince Wilfork. <laughs> I mean, Vince in there. Vince Wilfork's loved, but he's strategic. Who's like a Bergie? Oh, Gronk. Gronk kind of, yeah, kind of Gronk. Um, otherwise, just like that, I mean, who's that? Oh, Andrew Luck. What's he up to? Andrew Luck would be great. Yeah, definitely. A, yeah, like a fish out of water. Sort yeah. Of person. Um, I need Zlatan in it. <laughs> Zlatan for sure. He's, yeah. Zlatan comes in halfway through. Everyone's like, everyone here's yes. got big egos. And then Zlatan comes in and we're like, okay, everybody, that guy sucks. We're like, we yeah. gotta team up. That would be good. 
I um, want Francis Naganu in it. Francis for sure. Yeah, he's zero social, just athlete. You need that. Oh, okay. If I could, we're sending two MMA fighters. I think I would rescind Francis. I think I would rescind Francis. Okay. I think you for sure. I mean, for sure. You want a social reality show? Who do you said? Who do you said? Con- Fucking DB Connor? Cooper. <laughs> oh, jail would be insane. Jake. I'm okay. <laughs> Chael did a video from the shower this week. <laughs> John uh, you Jones. sent Chael Sonnen in, and I'll take it one of two ways. One will make Chael even more mad. You send Chael in, he's there from the beginning. And then halfway through, I've got two options. One's more niche. One gets a bigger reaction. Option one, the easy option, you send in Daniel Corbier. Yeah, sure, sure. DC. And everyone's, everyone loves DC. Big, mm-hmm. yeah, big energy. Chael hates him. Yeah, and like so, those two are just at it all the time. We get some of the more that classic. That's good. Option B, I think the funnier option, because okay. who's the one person who won't chip with Chael? GSP. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. You send in George St. Pierre, and I want Chael to be like, "No, not this guy. He sucks." And everyone's like, "Really? He's just..." Yeah, like I like yeah. clips of Chael being like he's the worst. I fucking hate that guy. And then cuts to GSP <laughs> sipping tea or like yeah, sitting quietly true. on the thing or like winning every challenge without trying at all. Like I think be really fun. Fucking Chael's such a perfect person for one of these shows. I'm just I have a fucking rotation of Chael moments over the past just week. <laughs> he made up a new diet that's just liquid salad, aka a stew. He's very. This happened this week in the middle of UFC news. That would uh, be that be good. Dead. He'd be perfect on um on the women's side. There's a few folks I'd really like to see. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese both need to be on there. Angel For Reese sure. would be awesome. Be electric. Yeah. I would really yeah. really like that. Hope Solo. Duh. <laughs> yeah, for sure. She's on there. Maybe give me a little Rhonda. Rhonda's needed. Yeah, she'd be the person. She's the asshole. I mean, yeah, she'd be okay. Yeah, I, I mean, there's a few guys I really, really like. You don't athletes. want to name any women? Jenny Finch? I love female athletes that have personalities in the media, Jake. Candace Parker is great. Does she get on this show? No. That's true. <laughs> There'd be folks we're not thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Sue Bird? They... Haven't heard her talk. I don't know. Diana Taurasi. <laughs> Let's use some terrible takes for Becky Hammond. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure. Yeah, Becky Hammond would be fine. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. There's plenty of them, but I don't know. I think it'd be. Lisa I want Leslie some athletes on fucking, there. Ugh, I hate Lisa Leslie, so she'd be good probably. <laughs> she'd probably she'd be probably good on there for a second. I thought you meant Leslie Jones. I'm like, sure, she could go. <laughs> <laughs> She's an athlete, right? She'd be uh, fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I think we're on to something here. I feel like that has to be next. Um, I really need to see it. Also, I, mean, I should tell you this, Jake. There's a, the challenge, not all stars. It's something where it's a group of challenge people. They face a group of professional athletes. Oh, it's good. So I thought of, it. I thought of our Bergie. Who's that? Dirk. <laughs> Dirk would be fun. Dirk's on there. And he's just like, are we competing? Really <laughs> yeah. Somehow it comes Dirk. down to a challenge where it's doing that one stupid hook shot he's got. <laughs> yeah. Every, this challenge is hopping challenge on one up. leg. Yeah. Happy hopscotch. Yao Ming. Be... Is he? How's Yao Ming doing? I don't know. Have we heard from him, of him? Also, just okay? so someone's not yelling at us, Shaq, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, nowadays he wouldn't be great, but Shaq's Shaq, Shaq. <laughs> oh, I mean, Shaq I and Charles think... doing so. They Shaq can and Charles. Let them and... host the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ernie. Oh, that's good. I want Ernie on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a gamer. He is a gamer. Ernie New idea. Great. Only commentators. What are we doing? Only commentators. Give me. That's so petty. Give me Ernie. <laughs> Give me Joe Buck. <laughs> oh, gross. Give all of the, your favorite, Doris Burke. Um, she's in there. Let's squeeze them all in. Gus Johnson, he's annoying. Folks will turn on him. 
Yes, they would. Yes, they would. Tony Romo's trying to predict everything that's happening. Tony Romo would be great on this show, just regardless. He's the drunk that like doesn't really show up. <laughs> Tony Romo would be great on that show, but there's a lot of athletes I just feel like need to get on there. Yeah, a lot of athletes with big personalities. We need, I mean, George Kittle would be great. We need more George Kittle on everything, in my personal opinion. Oh, he should be just Marshawn. As big as stars Kelsey. Marshawn's fantastic. Yeah. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of surprised his, like, because they've done a bunch of little shows that are just yeah. Marshawn. I'm surprised those haven't taken off. I don't know how big a name he actually is outside the NFL. I don't know. Because, like, he did a bunch of stuff with Conan. Yeah, it's true. Like, folks know him. That's real. I think everybody. He was in a Marvel movie. Was he? I think he made an appearance. Am I wrong? I don't know. I wasn't expecting. I'm the wrong person. I'm not. I'm the right person to say. I don't know. (laughs) I thought I was going to fly that in. I felt like 60 percent sure on it. That was Michael B. Jordan. I think. I'm not sure. No, I'm not getting him confused. He was in the movie. I just can't remember if it was a Marvel movie or not. (laughs) Okay. I mean, yeah. Getting the movie confused, not the person. Okay. Okay, so off season stuff. Let us know um, if you want if there's specific bits or segments you want for next season that yeah. you want us to like prepare right now. Do you want Zach watches a Marvel movie to come back? Wow! Or, or either of us watch anything that we may have not seen and give our review. It could be anything. Yeah. Literally, I haven't seen anything. Period. I so, haven't seen Oak Island, so Jake has not seen Oak Island. That's if it wouldn't, if it wasn't the most repetitive thing of all time, we would do a season like an episode by episode podcast. That's crazy. Maybe. Yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> that would be the worst thing of all time. Um, but we plan to have a lot more games, a lot more yeah. segments next year. So if you have ideas for games, segments, anything like that that you want to see that we have done in the past or have not done in the past. Let us know. I will say, and I'm really good at this, Jake. Okay. We have a new sponsor today. <laughs> yes. Today. Yeah. Um, so really quick, just, you know, if you need a little pick me up a little, you know, I've been doing this thing, Jake. I'm not sure, I haven't told you about it. Every single day in February, I'm waking up at 5 a.m. every day. I've been seeing you online. So I did it. Uh, yeah, I did a couple of videos. I'm going to do a bigger video at the end. But when you do that. You gotta have a little caffeine, a little pick me up in the middle of the day, and that is why Grinds has jumped in, has swooped in, and said we want to sponsor you. So if you're unsure of what Grinds are, you can go to getgrinds.com and use the promo code Flurry Sports and get twenty percent off your order. Grinds are coffee grounds that come in a little pouch. So if you are addicted to tobacco, if you're addicted to nicotine at this point, it's 2024. There's no point. There's no point to still be doing that bullshit. Okay. Get off of it. This is a healthy way to wean yourself off that bad habit, but it's also a way to get caffeine into your system pretty easily. It's just little coffee pouches. Put them in your lip. You're essentially brewing that coffee in your mouth. They taste good. It's the equivalent of like a half a cup of coffee. Pretty good. And again, different flavors. They got cinnamon whiskey. They got caramel. They got mocha. They got all kinds of stuff. Getgrinds.com. Use the promo code Flurry Sports. Again, 20% off your order. It's kind of crazy. It's a big discount for you. It supports the show. So please go and do that for us. We appreciate it. Jake, any final thoughts before we end the seventh season of the Flurry Sports Podcast? Well, we just appreciate you all listening. This is the season we hit 10K online, Mm, so we appreciate that greatly. So in the meantime, why not support that YouTube channel? Uh this show goes off and it allows us to dive into some other things that are coming on. So please, as the baseball season kicks back in, playing catch up podcast does as well. So enjoy that. And yeah, I mean, Zach talked about feedback, but whatever you all listen to, whether that's the, you know, if you're going to catch the, I don't think so pod or, you know, whatever you listen to on the network, let us know what you want to hear. We're putting things in. Uh, if you want more wrestling stuff, let me know. I could do it. I just don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm yelling into the void on wrestling, so I don't know. If you have a favorite podcast 
and you think, oh, maybe Zach and Jay could do a segment kind of like that in yeah. their own way. Like, let us know. If you, you want, want to, to do car talk, I'll try it. Do, so we don't have to. Yeah. That'd be yeah. Great. If you could write a script. <laughs> and, and then cast us. Yeah. Or fun. record if you want to record something for us to play for the show, that's fine. We'll play full episodes if you got them. We don't need to be here. That's right. Season eight. That's a great season to check out. But if you don't want us to, then you got to submit some ideas. That's right. So it's going to be a good one. We've always said content might be better in the football season, but our favorite is the off season. So yes, season eight is a good one. The Ocho. It'll be the Ocho. It's what they called Zach in high school. A number he could never wear. The Ocho. Do you ever wear eight in anything? No way you ever wore a single digit. My first number in really? basketball was eight. Wow. That they did call him the Ocho. They did call me the Ocho. I mean, I had I had the floppy hair. The hair was that was long hair, Zach, too. Just think of that. First Emo number Zach ever... wearing fucking wow. number eight. Yeah. First number I ever wore. Maybe this was indicative. 99. In basketball? Or what was it for? Basketball. My basketball number was 99. Nice. Baseball, okay. and this is kind of unheard of, 88. Interesting. Michael Big Urban. boy. Big boy. Des, Des Bryant. Oh, yeah, that too. Des Bryant, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, got yeah, to we'll- out there. Big numbers. But uh, any feedback you have is great. But seriously, thank you all so much for listening. We enjoy it. So we're not leaving. It's just a short break. But enjoy the time. Listen to some other things. Yeah, we're brainstorming. We're tinkering away. I... And once again, inspired by an idea that I will talk to Zach about off air that just won't work. There's no feasible way for it to work. But if if you, you know, if you've got extra money to send to us that I can make my idea happen, I'd like that too. But otherwise, just thanks for listening. It's been great. Um, and until next year, you know, roll damn tide, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs>